That's right. Good afternoon, everybody. Froggy here and Eller. And it is my great honor to say that I am sitting down this afternoon with uh, Dr. Dan Ball as uh, he gets ready to go into retirement. I think he just told me it's about six weeks. I was surprised that he didn't have it down to the days, the hours, and the minutes. But how are you doing, Dr. Dan Ball? I am fine, thanks. And Eller, how are you? Uh, well, I'm getting better. You know, you sound terrible, but you look well. well <laughs> If only they could see me then, right? Yeah, that's right. You that's need right. a TV camera. Yeah, yeah that's right. So, um, you know, the last few weeks have certainly been, um, I would say, unbelievable if, I, if it was my life and it's your life. So what do you think about the last few weeks? Well, I'm somewhat embarrassed by them, uh, all the attention that uh, has been bestowed upon Marge and me in the last few weeks. Uh, some of it not deserved, uh, but we're very humble by folks saying thank you and uh, we've enjoyed our 15 years in Lander and in Greenwood and we hope we can stay here another 15. Well you know I think everybody is just thrilled that you're not moving on that you're not going back to Missouri or that you are staying right here in Greenwood and you have that lovely home right there and you're going to be right next to the campus there that's uh is it going to be tough at first to be right across from the campus what do you think? I, I I haven't thought much about that. It's going to be tough uh, to uh, know that uh, I'm not being the big big cheese that I've been touted to be. At. I think you'll still be the big cheese. You just won't have to have the responsibility yeah. of being the, the well, big guy there. Uh, Lander has blessed both Marge and me uh, <laughs> with their um, giving us this opportunity to live our lives here for 15 years and. Hopefully it helped Lander some over the, over the course of time. And I think there's no question you have helped Lander over time. You know, when you first came here, what was the biggest thing that was that you thought as you looked across at everything that was facing Lander that you saw? Well, there were two things. Uh, one was when I came from my interview uh, for the job, I couldn't find Lander. And I decided uh, to get the job, I'm going to make Lander a little more visible. And so we did done that, I think, both physically and programmatically. And the second thing that uh, I was uh, faced with was uh, we were uh, pretty lean in the budget area. And uh, I committed to addressing that over the years and uh, getting some reserves for our campus. And I, we have that now. So those are two early on projects. Well, you certainly made a difference, <clears throat> excuse me, on the entrance and the budget to be able to have a rainy day fund established now in this economy is pretty awesome. Well, uh, it, it wasn't easy and a lot of people uh, contributed to that uh, goal. Uh, our faculty, staff and students and austerity and efficiency and uh, uh, new programs all contributed to helping us financially. So. Enrollment grew, that helps also. Absolutely. You know, the other thing you were telling me, though, there's all the big things, but there's the small things that are some of the things that you're most proud of, too. I think that's true. I, you, you, uh, you can see an entrance, or you can see a building, or a new street, or even a new program. Uh, some of the things that you can't see uh, that uh, I'm particularly proud of, uh, a couple things. Number one, uh, we started a... Uh, staff awards uh, program where we award our staff. We've done it with faculty for years, but we've never done things for the staff. So we started that in my first year, and we've been doing it now for 15 years. We recognize two staff people a year with a little monetary award and a plaque and a breakfast. I think that's nice. Yeah, we do that on spring break when the students and faculty are gone. Oh, so they don't even have to be there or feel that's that right. they were left out or something. That's right, that's right. And anything else? Well, let's see. Uh, our tobacco-free uh, campus, we were the first in the state to do that, uh, to go tobacco-free both indoors and outdoors. I'm proud of that. I'm proud of our retirees brunch, that we bring our retirees back to learn a little, get an update on the campus and feed them as well and hear some stories. Uh, I like to hear stories from retirees. They tell the stories get larger and more bizarre as time passes. and. I will join that group next year and I'll have my own stories to tell. 
Okay. All right. So you're going to be uh, one of the retirees that'll be back there, right? Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Yes. Well, no question about it. Other things that you're going to be doing, what's going to be happening once you retire in June? Well, that's a good question. <coughs> uh, I don't have any plans. I don't have a job. Uh, I do plan on spending some... Do you some, want a job? No, not a, not a regular job. No, no ma'am. <laughs> uh, but I, I'll be doing something. I'm too energetic not to do something. But anyway, for early or short term, we're going to spend some time uh, doing a little traveling with my granddaughter and uh, go hopefully go see my two grandsons play some baseball this summer for a little while. So those are just short-term. That's short something term. you've never been able to I've sing. Never, I've never watched my child, my grandchildren do anything, either sing or dance or act or play uh, on a soccer field or a baseball field. I'm looking forward to that. That is very cool. Well, you know, um, there's a lot we're going to be talking about. We've got uh, so many things from the Palmetto Award that he got to... Uh, I don't know, we're going to talk about Marge. We're going to be talking about whether she can allow him to stay home. I've got a lot of things I want to ask him, but first I need to get rid of this frog. Let's hear a quick word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Oh, that's right, we're right back here. Froggy here in Eller with Dr. Dan Ball this afternoon. You know, um, I was interested in reading the article about you that is in the Lander magazine. And it uh, talks about your passion for education. It says in 2001 inaugural address, you said, um, Lander will never yield to the temptation of many who want to graduate without an education. And just to find out that that's what Reverend Lander's message to prospective students was, those who desire graduation without education need not apply. I thought I said a little softer than Sam Lander did, <laughs> but it's essentially the same message. That's Correct. true. That's true. I tried to do my homework before I got the job, and uh, that was particularly poignant for me to see see that because I hardly believe it in maintaining the integrity of a degree. The baccalaureate degree has been um, challenged, it has been attacked, it has been, um, I, in my words, watered down some in some places, but not at Lander, not as long as I'm here. Well, um, you know, when you talk about that and you talk about the four-year education and they're talking so much about the two-year and the getting into manufacturing and, and the jobs, I was just reading an article that um, I think Governor Hodges and the former treasurer had done a study that we could be, what, by 2030, 115,000 workers shy of having competent, capable la uh, labor force. What do, you, what do you see as far as the possibilities of the four-year versus the two-year? Where do they all come together? They're both needed. Uh, I would say that uh, short-term, the two-year of training, preparation for immediate jobs, uh, it, it, we need to have that uh, capability and we need to retrain people that, uh, as jobs change. The difference uh, that I see with a baccalaureate, the four-year degree, is I, I'm a believer that the four-year degree prepares you for many jobs. Uh, you, your, your, your major, whether it be chemistry or biology or teacher ed or business, prepares you for your first job. And then your general education, the English and the history and the math and the cultural stuff pre prepares you for every other job that you might uh, face uh, in the future. It also prepares you to be a better citizen. Not that a two-year degree does not do that, but I think it, the baccalaureate is designed to make you a better citizen, a better parent, a better voter, more knowledgeable decision maker, and a leader. Uh, so leadership uh, uh, is more attached to a four-year degree than a two-year. How so by, um, by voting and everything, Diane? I, you know, I talk to lots of students about politics and such, <laughs> and I find them actually kind of lacking in knowledge. In fact, so many of them tell me, I didn't register to vote because I don't feel I know enough to be able to vote. That uh, attitude or that response that you hear like that starts at, uh, at the ho in the home, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe that... Uh, your attitudes and your work ethic and your uh, your integrity start at home. Mm -hmm. uh, I here. agree with that. And uh, the uh, when you're 16, 18, 20 years old, those skills and knowledge are 
sharpened by going to post-secondary education. Sure. And so, um, but I mean, I'm talking about college students. Yes, college yes. students. I'm not talking about kids or anything. Well, I, you know, uh, college students. They, uh, they. Uh, Legally, are adults when yeah. they're eighteen, but right. there's still some chill, childishness in in our eighteen, twenty year old people, and we hope that college, whether it be two year or four year, matures that a little bit. Uh, students want structure; they really want structure. They won't admit that, and I probably shouldn't be talking about this on the air, <laughs> but uh, because if you have structure, they're going to try to get around it. But, sure. that's, but if you don't have any structure, it's bedlam. Well, you know, I think, isn't that one of the advantages of a Lander because it is a smaller school? I think I've heard it. You cannot hide at Lander. Yeah, that's that's true. And uh, that's one of the virtues of a smaller university. Uh, we we uh, depend on our students' uh, success for the campus to be success. Some institutions in this country do not have to depend on students to be successful. They, they have other missions besides undergraduate education and so um, we are not uh, an institution that's a Princeton or an Oxford or a Johns Hopkins or a Washington University where, or Duke University where there are billions of dollars in endowment for right. research. Uh, so uh, Lander is, a, Lander's mission is to educate the populace that it serves which is state of South Carolina, but primarily a seven or eight county region here with some cultural uh, infusion from all states and, and nations. You know, speaking of that, Dan, the program that you had with um, going to Korea and bringing students the exchange program and the doctor that was here. What? Do Dr. J. Park. Yes, Dr. Yes. J. Park. Yes. Um, that was an innovative program for Lander. It was, and uh, still thriving. Uh, we have more international students now than we've ever had. We have over 100. We have m about half of those are from Asia. The other half are from all over other countries. We have students from like 26 or 28 countries, but a big chunk of them come from Asia. Now, how are you doing at getting uh, Lander students to go overseas? Well, it's a slow process, but we do have some going. Okay. Certainly, Americans, American students, whether they're Lander students or any other university mm -hmm. students, are reluctant to go to Asia. But that reluctance is slowly eroding, and uh, we're, we've had several students in China and Thailand and Korea uh, since we started this program about four years ago. Right. So I was just curious because yeah. I know that was a that was kind of just a struggle to get them to go. That's you were right. hoping that it would be more going. I think people are fearful of the unknown, uh, and this country really is not familiar with the Asian culture. We're a lot more familiar with European culture, and sure. so uh, but because that's most most of where most of us came from. Sure. Uh, but uh, you're seeing that uh, fade away now, and I think there's more desire to be global to study globally. Yeah, you're going to have to work globally. You better learn a little bit about the cultures that you have to deal with. Absolutely. Uh, that's that, that's a very good point. <laughs> so um, what is Dr. Parks doing now? Well, he's retired. He's, I, I know. He, he's, how's he he's, doing he's, in retirement? Listen, he's uh, he's in Indiana, not Indiana, he's in Iowa. In he, Iowa? Enjoying his grandchildren. And uh, uh, his son uh, is nearby, one of his two sons is nearby. And, uh, they have three children, and he's enjoying them. So we, we keep in touch. We keep in touch. Well, that's that's terrific. Now, as far as where we're uh, with all the things that has happened, I mean, you look at the list. You're right; it's outstanding. What? But of the other things, what's happening over there on the campus right now? I drove by there the other day. I was like, "Wow, what's going on?" <laughs> well, if, if there's not a mud hole here and there on a <laughs> university campus, something's wrong. We, you always are trying to improve or expand or uh, uh, enhance what you have. Uh, we're uh, redoing our, we're extending our entrance a little bit. We're making a, making a little more grand. That was a part of a two-part project where we had some safety issues on our plaza where the kids go from class to class and building to building. We had some brick issues there. So we were combining this plaza update with an entrance uh, enhancement. So that's one thing. The bigger thing is our new residence hall, which is scheduled to open in September, or oh, yeah, September. And uh, it'll have 
210 beds. I think 210, maybe 208, right. over, over 200 beds. And it's state of the art, brick and steel, and not a stick built uh, residence hall like some campuses do today. They build them for, to last for 20, 30 years, then tear them down, build new. This is a 100 year old building. It, it's, la it's supposed to last 100 years? It's supposed to last 100 years. So. Wow. Uh, we're real proud of that. It's going to be a beautiful facility, probably the prettiest building on campus, in my opinion. Yeah. And, and, and who is it going to be named for? Well, uh, the ULF has board trustees that. Oh, okay. That probably, well, I'll be honest with you. I know, but I'm not going to tell. And, but it won't be Dan Ball, how's it? Okay. Well, okay. I was just checking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. But uh, so that's another project that'll be uh, finishing up. Yeah, that'll be that'll be ready to be moved into in September. And let's see, we have a few little small things that are going on. We're fixing some sidewalks in a couple of places and trimming some trees and some little stuff to get ready for the fall semester. We, we, we redo all of our residence halls every summer with paint and, and refurbishment, uh, maybe new furniture and some and some carpet and that kind of stuff. So our physical plant, people are real busy getting ready for fall, even here in May. And how about the Lander Foundation building? I mean, the oh, old I bank building. Yes, yeah, I, I forgot I, about I that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, it was in the old uh, Carolina First Bank building Carolina that First. Uh, uh, sat vacant for several years and we were fortunate to be able to get a hold of that. We refurbished it. We're moving our Lander Foundation over there. It's our fundraising arm for the university. It'll also house our alumni association offices, and so you'll have a place to hang out. You'll be able to find our foundation and alumni office, and you'll be able to park there and walk one or two steps, and you'll be in the building. No, well, that's a good thing, right? That, that parking is a great thing for people that uh, have to hunt for parking spots, let alone have to walk. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, that's a nice addition. It's open right now. Yeah, I know. We moved in this week and last week. Last week, yeah. yeah. I mean, it looks fabulous. Yeah. looks fabulous. Thank you. Saw Charlie Barano out there taking pictures the other day. I'm sure he posted good them on him. Facebook. Yeah. yeah good so it looks good. Yeah. Well, it looks nice. It's nice to have something in that building. Yeah. Jeff always said that was one of the prime pieces of property right here in Greenwood, right there on that little triangle right there. Yeah, yeah it's a good piece. We're fortunate to have. Right across the street will be built our new Montessori Education Center, uh, the, the, Virgi the Virginia Self Montessori Center, and it would be a national center. We Is that are, where the Coleman? That's where Coleman Hall oh, was. Okay. That seven-story ugly albatross is now gone. Charlie has thanked me numerous occasions <laughs> for that, on numerous occasions, and we're going to build a, a nice facility there in the next couple of years. Wow. Things are moving at Lander, <clears throat> at Lander but um, we are going to hear a word from uh, South Carolina News here in just a second. We are here with Dr. Dan Ball. You know, when we come back, we got to talk a little bit about Marge Ball. I tell you what, she has gotten awards this year, and she is such an integral part of this community. You are so lucky, Dan Ball. I know that. Okay, good. I just <laughs> thought I'd say that. Are you listening, Marge? I got him to say it right here on WCRS. Hey, I'm Ann Eller. Let's hear uh, South Carolina Radio News, and we'll be right back. Um, are you a pirate or a pack rat? Do you have a vacation of a lifetime sitting in the attic? Or a college tuition hung on a wall? Or is a fabulous retirement hidden in your jewelry box? Bring those items to Sharp Facets Gallery. We can establish value and buy from you or sell for you. And so ends another chapter at Sharp Facets Gallery. 72 Bypass and on the web, sharpfacets.com. Oh, you know, I'm right back here. I'm Ann Eller, right here with Dr. Dan Ball. You know, I was thinking, Dan, you know, Cicero wrote this book about a life well lived. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I think you could almost say that about you and Marge, a life well lived. You were telling me um, earlier how wherever you went, you always made it a positive in the community that you were living in. You never approached, what were you telling me? Well, you know, I've never tried to... Uh tell people, well, this is the way we did it back at home, or we did it this way at that university. We accepted who this community is. In every community we've lived in, we've made a commitment to be happy, to be uh, positive, and be a contributor in some fashion. And we're not going to 
bad mouth any place we've ever lived. We've enjoyed every place. We've lived in five or six different states uh, and enjoyed every place we've ever lived, and Greenwood is at the top of the list. Well, you know, I just was thinking about all the things that you've done and, you know, teaching biology, you know, that was a love of yours for so long, right? It was, and uh, that was what I wanted to do and did for a long time, 15 years or so, before I got into this uh, pseudo-political business of uh, being an administrator. <laughs> yeah, so as, as, you, uh, as you think about some of the things, you know, you, we were talking about, you actually are hands-on even to hiring faculty. You've hired a lot of the I, faculty that's on board now. Yes, and I, I'm, I uh, interview all candidates for faculty positions at Lander, and I probably have missed uh, less than a handful in 15 years, and we bring in three or four candidates for each position, and we have 135 or so full-time faculty and many part-time, and I've interviewed the candidates for every one of those positions, 25 to 50 minimum a year, uh, new people that I interview. And so. I, it's 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 a, I guess a, a selfish thing. I just like to know who we're hiring. Yeah. So and I take thirty minutes or so with each of the candidates just to find out a little bit more about them. And have you ever said no? I don't think we want that person. On rare occasions. On yes. rare occasions. Yes. Huh? yes. I, I, By the I, time they get to you, they've already been well vetted. It's really more of a question of. It, it's a uh, well. Subjective. Yeah, the, 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 the credentials are there. They wouldn't be at my level for an interview. But there are some things that uh, my office or my position or I can determine that maybe nobody else could, and because uh, you know, I've been around a long time. I've I've seen failures. I've, I've hired wrong, wrong. I've right. hired more right than wrong. But I've learned on the how to hiring process should go. And uh, I look for uh, people's attitudes, I look for their commitment, I look for their energy, and I'm not going to ask them how many publications they have or what, you know, their research interests or, I do, we'll ask them about their teaching philosophy and how they treat students and what would you do, I would give them situational things, how would you handle a situation like this? Uh, uh, and I get a pretty good insight into whether that person is going to be successful at Lander. You can be a success at another place and be a failure at Lander and vice versa. So it's a, it's a match, it's a fit that we look for, or I look for. And my faculty, search committees, deans, and vice presidents do a heck of a good job of uh, filtering candidates. And I don't have to make negative decisions for the most part. Right. But you do like having to uh, be able to put your... You're uh, okay on it, right? And be Your able to stamp say, I, of approval. Just say, I've interviewed these people. I know who they, I know a little bit about them, uh, besides what you can read on a piece of paper. Absolutely. Well, I think that, uh, you know, that's one of the joys of being at a school that's smaller, though, too, as far as yeah. being president. Yeah, Harris Pastides could take, he didn't have the time to interview all the candidates that apply for jobs at uh, University of South Carolina when they have, you know, what, 3,000 faculty down there right. or something, you know. You think about the size of Lander. I remember at one point there was real concern with the budget. We didn't have any money. The state was doing very poorly. The economic situation was very bad. There was a lot of question whether Lander was actually going to make it. What do you think about the size, though, today with Lander and how it had fared, has fared through all the budget crisis and where we are today? Well, uh, Lander is, is, a, is a thriving institution. It's financially sound. Uh, better than it was when I came, quite a bit better. It is larger in terms of enrollment, in terms of acres, in terms of facilities. It's larger in terms of numbers of programs. It's larger in terms of retention rate, graduation rate. Uh, all those things, all those metrics that you look at to uh, evaluate a campus, Lander's strong. It's going to be here for a long time. Well, that's a good thing. We like that here in yeah. Greenwood, but you know, yeah. But I do remember a time where it was kind of shaky. Sure. Yeah, sure. it was. And it's good to hear that it has uh, gotten in good shape. Now, the first lady of Lander is Marge Ball. She has been such a positive, positive force, too, uh, here at Lander. Well, some board members have told me, and they've, they've said this in public, <laughs> that uh, we should have made Marge president of Lander and try to find a job for Ball, Dan Ball to do. So... <laughs> I mean, uh, she has been an inspiration to me and to many people associated with Lander and Greenwood. And uh, 
I couldn't have done near the job that I've been credited for with doing had it not been for Marge. Uh, she's just a, uh, a we, we're a partner, we're a team, uh, and uh, I rely on her, and I hope she relies on me a little bit too. Well, I, I know she's relying on you not to be at home every day so she can do <laughs> what she does without interference, correct? I suspect that's correct. Well, I'll <laughs> never admit that on radio. Okay, don't ever admit that on the radio, Dan Ball. But, um, you know, one of the things about Marge is she, you know, and I have read this in the article, she always sees the positive in everybody. That's an accomplishment in this world. Yeah, I think that's genetic, maybe. I don't know. Her mother was that way, and uh, she was just uh, kind of an epitome of her mother in that respect. And uh, it's paid off for her and uh, paid off for me and for hopefully this community. Now, I understand it was your guitar playing that really got, uh, got Marge uh, stuck on you. Well, I think maybe, no, that wasn't, that, I don't know. I'd have to ask her that question, but I know that uh, uh, her mother played the guitar. Okay. And I think maybe I convinced her mother that I might be okay <laughs> by knowing a little bit about the guitar. guitar. Yeah. <laughs> You um, thinking about going back and learning playing more guitar? I am. I have. I Are have you a, really? I have a I have a relatively new guitar that I'm gonna really get good at before okay. I pass on. Wow. Okay. Any other things on the bucket list of things <laughs> that you want to accomplish? Uh, maybe a, open up a radio station. I don't know. Uh, okay. <laughs> I happen to know a great one. No, I I I don't have major plans. I'm just going to live my life day by day for a few weeks and visit my grandchildren who I've never watched do anything. Okay, but you're and talking about learning the guitar or getting good at the guitar. I just wondered, you know, if you had other things. I mean, you know, what's happening with checkers? I've heard well, much about the checkers lately. Uh, checkers is a game for ki kids and old men. And, uh, <laughs> you don't fall in either <laughs> one? I'm not either one of those. <laughs> uh, checker players, uh, they're not as pre a prominent prevalent as they once was. I mean, I'd go to some tournaments. That's something that I thought about. And there are several here in the South. North Carolina is particularly big with checkers, as is Tennessee. So those aren't too far away. Well, you know, I remember when you played, uh, how many people did you play checkers uh, when you had the tournament? Well, here we, had a little, we had a little dog and pony show where I played a dozen, I think, a dozen games at the same time. Right. Uh, but the people I played were students, so you would expect me to beat those guys. <laughs> And the truth comes out right here on actually, WCRS. Actually, actually, I lost a game. I you lost, lost one. one. I, I think we played like 56 games that day, and I lost one. You lost only one. That's not bad, Dan. Hey, I'll take those odds any day. I'm Ann Eller here with Dr. Dan Ball. We'll be back in just one moment. That's right. We're right back here. Sharp Passage Gallery. I'm in my studio this afternoon with uh, Dr. Dan Ball, and we've been talking about all the things, you know, it's it's um, it's a wonderful opportunity to sit down and look at 15 years. You have to do the highlights, but uh, it is wonderful, and it makes you realize, you know, I'm going to just say this, Dr. Dan Ball, you came into Sharp Facets Gallery. We hadn't been here very long uh, when you came in. You, it was your first year, 2000. We moved into this building in 2000, and you were trying to uh, get your office redone. And you came in. Somebody had suggested to come see some of the items we had here. And uh, that's actually how we met you. And it was I, uh, I vaguely remember that. Vaguely, yes. yeah. Well, it, uh, I'm, not that is. I'm not a shopper by nature, so I was probably doing some shopping. That it's not one of my Yeah, you and Marsh came in. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> And, you know, that's how uh, we got to know you. And then, of course, uh, Jeff talked to you about the docent program. And, um, you know, he had talked to other presidents about this. And you were the one that said, let's do this. And it really has meant a lot to uh, Lander, hasn't it? Well, Sharp Facets and Jeff Eller and Ann Eller have been a, a big inspiration for, for me and for Lander. They've contributed. And I'm not doing a commercial here now for yeah. anybody. Yes, I am doing a commercial. You have given resources and time and ideas to me and to Lander, and we're grateful for that. And the DOSA program, we have over 60 now. These are volunteers. We call them white-collar volunteers. They come, to, they come to work when they want to, and they go, they go to home when they want to. They don't get paid, and they get to pick what they want to do. And that's a pretty good job. That's a goal. great job. That's a great job, but they're not paid. Right. And so we're, we're very fortunate to have that program. 
And it's yeah. certainly a thanks, same, to Je- yeah, thanks to Jeff Eller. Yeah, absolutely. And when you think back on the on the number of dollars that it has actually saved you, and and when you think about it, at first some of the professors over there were afraid it was taking jobs or anything, and now they always say, I, I understand, uh, gosh, when can we get a docent over there? They, they get addicted to them very yeah. quickly, faculty and staff, and I've become addicted to them. I, I've had docents work in my office, and uh, they're mostly uh, retired professionals from all the way from engineering to phys- doctors to radio broadcast people uh, to uh, CEOs of corporations to uh, plant managers, to uh, mothers, you know, uh, and uh, we've uh, been fortunate to have that expertise on our campus for our students, and they've they've enhanced the learning process at Lander. Absolutely. So uh, uh, that's another program that uh, came to pass. But, you know, we've also got to be talking about the future, and the future is the new president. What can you tell us about him? His name is Richard Cosentino. Not Cosentino, but Cosentino. He's about 6'6". Six, six. Uh, he's in better shape than I am. Uh, I've spent some time with Rich, and he's a delightful man. His wife, Jessica, is a delightful lady. They're going to fit in well here in Greenwood and Lander. And that's my opinion, at least. I think okay. they're going to be well uh, groomed to take this position. Uh, he uh, called one night... Uh, three or four weeks ago and said, I'm in town. He said, we're heading back to North Carolina. He said, why don't we stop and have a glass of lemonade or a martini or something? And I said, well, he wanted to invite me out someplace. I said, why don't you just come over to the house on your way out and we'll have a glass of lemonade or a martini. And so they came over about 7. We They planned to stay till 7.30 or so. They, they left at midnight. Oh, my gosh. So we had a long evening, a very delightful evening and we get to know them on a personal basis uh, as much as you can about a couple in four hours and uh, we've talked since before and since and uh, he uh, he's bringing uh, bring some new ideas and some new challenges and uh, I think the board has selected a great new president oh We'll I see. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess the uh, jury's still out, well, but it looks good. On he, uh, it well, looks good. and he not only looks good, but he acts good. Oh, he acts and, good. And, okay. And, uh, and uh, he has the energy and the attitude that I think I look for when I hire people, and uh, he certainly would be, would be my choice. That's terrific. Now, what do you think some of the challenges going forward that Lander's going to face? Well, there's always going to be the issue of uh, uh, protecting and improving what you have, taking mm-hmm. care of the things that you have. There'll be new programs that need to uh, evolve over the next 5, 10, 15 years. There are some social problems in our country. Uh, there are some health problems in our country, We're talking about things like obesity and uh, the millennium generation, the me now generation, the, uh, the, the somewhat breakdown of the family, the college, colleges inherit those problems from the society. Uh, we have, uh, we'll have to deal with that. We have these issues that have started since uh, Virginia Tech. Mm-hmm. We've been fortunate to not have that on our campus, but that's always a threat. Uh, the uh, Recent police uh, is- issues in our country uh, may filter down to a campus. We have to constantly be vigilant. We can make Lander even safer than it is. We can build a, a wall around it. We can put barbed wire at the top, and it would be a much safer place. That is not what a campus is supposed to be, and I would hope that we don't ever reach that level. There are some campuses in this country, however, who are walled and bar- barbed wire, and Landers should never try to reach that level. So those are some of those, the social issues, programmatic issues, taking care of your facilities, taking care of your people, making sure that uh, our students, uh, their money is well spent and they get a good value for their dollar. Well, um, what about uh, the budget is still kind of in, in flux here down there in Columbia? In Columbia yes. Yeah. Well, uh, 
you know, there's always a drama in the politics. Drama, yeah. In politics, is no exception uh, this year. It may be a little more dramatic than in past years because uh, there's some new issues out there that, well, not so much new, but some critical issues that need to be addressed. Our roads, uh, as we all know, uh, if you had any potholes or had any front alignment work done on your car or your tires punctured, you'll know right. that our roads need addressing soon. Uh, we have the, some of the worst uh, traffic fatalities uh, record or statistics in the state or the nation. Uh, so that's one issue they're dealing with. They're dealing with, uh, uh, we haven't had a bond bill in this state since I've been here. A bond bill is a uh, way to borrow money to fix things uh, like Excellent. mortgage. Governor Haley yeah. said no, 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 uh, She Dan. did, and she did. She has, she has her reasons for that. I just happen to disagree with our governor, and I want, I want to keep in good stead with the governor because she's been very kind and generous and, and, to me. And, and she did say those nice things about uh, you on did. the Palmetto Award. <laughs> <laughs> she did, she did. And so, uh, but I think when the session ends in June, you will see some uh, progress uh, toward those issues of roads, uh, capital, uh, and maybe even uh, uh, help with the, for the people in terms of uh, uh, new jobs uh, coming to the state. You know, Volvo, Volvo. Volvo, yes. I, and I've heard there may be any, another car company come. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we certainly are well positioned if we can. And then the other issue is, well, the infrastructure, the roads and bridges, et cetera. And then there's the people structure. That's right. we got to be able to have the people that can do the jobs. And that's my business, has been my business, uh, preparing people to be good citizens and good workers and good parents. And, and uh, I think that's one of the jobs of higher education, as, as all education, is you've got to have the qualified workforce to fill the jobs, and you've got to have the qualified workforce able to adapt to new jobs. And so that's what higher ed does. Well, well, two think, year, four year, four year schools. Well, I think that's the thing, you know, Dan, they, t they talk about that today's student will always be in school. They will never actually, used to be what, you graduated from college, maybe you got a BA or a BS, and then you didn't worry about going back to school. Now kids are going to be going back to school their whole life. Well, there'll be uh, new technologies and new ideas and new products that come along that require and new We're knowledge, training, new yeah. knowledge, and uh, I mean, I've been going to school. I've been, I, I still go to school. I attend meetings and conferences and uh, learn things, and take notes, and, and fill out surveys and read things. I'm still learning uh, how to do my job, and uh, I think all of us do that that, that are successful or have some bottom of success. Absolutely. Do, do you like um, all the computer technology, Dan? I'm a little bit behind the Sometimes I, I don't text unless I, I know how to do it. Right. I just tell my kids, if you want to talk to me, you better call me because I'm not texting you. Yeah. Uh, that's a that's the new generation thing. You know, we used to have a, that, that technology is not new. We used to have a telegraph. Right. We used to do telegraph. By punching a little buttons and stuff, and uh, yes, Dan. I mean, now with them, they invented, now you're dating yourself, Dan. Well, then they did build, invented the telephone where you could talk. Right. Now we're back to punching buttons. Yes. And we're not talking anymore. That's one of our social problems in this country. Uh, we don't. Our social skills and our young people are lacking, in my view. You know, I I think that's a good point, and I'd love to just discuss that for just one second because we're hitting the top of the hour, but we can stay over a couple minutes here. Um, this is WCRS right here in Greenwood. What have you noticed about the students today? You know, one of the things I noticed, you can see a family or a couple even sitting at a table out having dinner and they both have their phones out and they're texting or doing uh, Facebook or whatever and they're not communicating. Uh, we see that on our campuses too and I don't want to disparage any of my students, but uh, we're fat. We're overweight I, and I'm guilty too. We, we need to take a look at our health health of our young people, both mentally and physically. They go together. Um, uh, we've uh, tried to do some things at Lander to address some of that. Um, we have put all round tables in the dining hall as opposed to little rectangular ones, so you'd have to sit in a circle and talk to people. It hasn't worked very well. As, as well they as still I like. sit there they and still, look in their phones. They still look in their phone. We've tried to make our campus pedestrian, so you can't drive to your classroom and get out of the car and go into the building. You got to walk a little bit. I get complaints about that all the time, but that's a, a pedestrian campus is a goal for Lander. We're 
working toward that now, pushing all the parking to the outside and making kids walk. Uh, they can't drive from one end of the campus to the other to class. they got to walk. That's just one of the subtle <laughs> things, right, that little, you're working little on. Things. Little things yeah. mean a lot, right? Little well, things mean a lot. Well, they do to me. They do to me. Well, Dr. Dan Ball, it's been so nice to have you here today. Thanks for sharing an hour with us. You're quite welcome. I've enjoyed it. Well, we'll have to have you back after retirement come, kicks in and see how you're doing. I don't have to be political then, do I? No, you don't. That's <laughs> right. Hey, this is WCRS right here in Greenwood. It's been my great pleasure to have Dr. Dan Ball right here with us on WCRS. Bye-bye, everybody.